Thank you. I want to, to focus now on the innovation because, well, it's commonplace to say that a crisis is also an opportunity. So um, there will be many changes in regulations, in the way people take decisions and, and all of that. Um, what innovations do you foresee? What innovations have you noticed? Maybe it's too early to say, but, but something must be happening. In terms of securities, I'm not sure. I mean, financial services in the U.S. is under a lot of stress. Um, I mean, even in the job I'm at, I spend a lot of time thinking about short-term stuff, a lot more time than I used to, for the last year and a half thinking about short-term stuff and not really thinking about long-term stuff much at all. And so I'm not sure that there is a lot of innovation going on right now other than people are trying... I mean, more cautious. Well, well, there is innovation in the following sense. I know a couple of people actually. See, one of the things was when they valued these collateralized debt obligations and people decided how much to buy or sell them for, they didn't look at the underlying mortgages. What they did was is they looked at aggregate statistics about the mortgages, like the credit, average credit rating of the people. They looked at um, statistics about the percent that they put down initially. And they just looked at these aggregate statistics, and these things were priced on the basis of those pure and simple. Um, I met someone who actually developed a very complex model to look at the underlying mortgages and then figure out what the price of the securities should be, given the underlying mortgages. And he couldn't sell it to anyone because nobody cared. Um, on the other hand, I also know some other people, that's all they're doing now. Um, and so, because these collateralized debt obligations, because they're based on specific mortgages, it act, right now, for example, it matters a lot in the U.S. where those mortgages are. Like if they're in the suburbs of Southern California, those are not good mortgages. If they're in Las Vegas or Phoenix or Florida, those are problematic too. If they're in Atlanta, they're not so bad. If they're in Omaha, Nebraska, that's even better. Um, so the geographic distribution really matters a lot, where it is, whereas it didn't before. And so it's probably, I would be surprised if one of the things that doesn't come out of it is, is like you say, a lot more careful pricing. And people are going to spend more time evaluating the characteristics of the underlying securities and mortgages. You, you mentioned that the location is important. Does that mean also globally? Of course, I, I bet that uh, a country is different from another country if the banks mm -hmm. have assets or, or investments or mortgages? Well, and there are different problems. I mean, one of the things that, that people are thinking about right now, I find this weird coming from the United States. I don't know if it's weird in Guatemala or not. Is, is in Poland, more than half of the mortgages in Poland, they use their own currency. Those, I, I'm not going to try to say it because I'll say it wrong. Um, but they have their own currency. Polish currency. Yeah, Polish currency. And, but most of the mortgages are priced in euros or Swiss francs. And so when the value of their currency fell a lot relative to the value of the euro, all of a sudden, in the currency these people earn money in, their mortgage payment just went up a lot. Um, and in the U.S., everybody gets a mortgage in U.S. dollars. And I, I assume in Guatemala, most people get mortgages in quetzales and not in U.S. dollars or something. Both. So, so people who have mortgages in, in dollars have seen their debt rising, rising a lot in terms of quetzales. Right. So it's pretty much the same in, as in Poland, I guess. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, and that's a problem that people are confronting right now is, is that the reason, at least in Poland, for example, the reason people got those mortgages was because the interest rates were a lot lower in euros than they were in Polish currency. And all of a sudden, the monthly payment is dramatically higher instead of lower. So it affects different, of course. Yeah. And how does this, this does affect the U.S.? Uh... Well, it affects European banks at least. I mean, there are a lot of banks in Europe that have branches all throughout Europe. And so there are banks that, that are, I, I don't remember exactly where the banks are originally from, but there are banks that are headquartered in other countries in Europe that have branches in Poland that have made these kinds of loans. And then the question is, when these loans, what is default going to mean? 
how is that going to affect the bank, actually? Um, and so it's further difficulties down the road. I bet. Well, thank you very much for sharing these ideas with us. Thank you. And uh, thank you too.